Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you all about the Notman House. Here at Haunted Montreal, we bring you ghost stories in both French and English every Saturday. Before we get into today's story, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we've got a new tale to share. Now without further ado, let's get spooky. The Notman House is a handsome limestone mansion on the corner of Sherbrooke and Clark Street. Originally constructed in 1845 for Sir William Collis Meredith by famous architect John Wells, the building has changed hands and vocations many times over the decades. It has served as a home for the city's wealthy elite. It has been a famous photographer's abode, a religious hospital for those deemed incurable, a residence for elderly women, a location for film shoots, and most recently, a dream come true for tech startup companies. It is also rumored to be haunted. And today, I'm gonna to divulge to you a first person account of an uncanny encounter in the building in the autumn of 2002. Haunted Montreal was contacted by a man named Andre, who wanted to relay a disturbing story that occurred within the Notman House in November of 2002. That year, the film Wicker Park was being shot in Montreal and welcomed actors like Josh Hartnett, Rose Byrne, and Diane Kruger. Andre had been hired as part of a security detail. Looking back, he explained that to put things in context, at the time these officers were called to monitor the premises between film shoots. Andre recalls guarding the Notman House, one of the film's shooting locations, stating that he remembers during one evening he was working with one other person on the site. This other officer was patrolling outside the complex and he was inside. At this time, the interior of Notman Home housed gloomy old cells in the basement. He continued to describe the inside during the film shoot. There was a large room used as living room and kitchen, another was a bedroom, and another was an office. The house was connected by a passageway to the old St. Margaret Hospital for the Incurables, and on the Notman House end of the passageway, there were Western-style swinging doors. During the night, at about 2 a.m., Andre was sitting on a couch in the living room and heard someone walking down the passageway. The footsteps began progressing more quickly to the point of running, and bam, the swinging doors suddenly swung open and closed in rapid succession as if someone had just run through them. Immediately, Andre jumped up and lit the area with his flashlight, but there was no one there. He continued, telling how he went to look in the passageway and there was still nobody present. At, at this point, he began to think that his colleague had played a trick on him, so he tried to contact him by radio. When he answered, Andre asked where he was, and he said, I'm in my car, parked outside on Clark Street. Andre asked him to join for a deeper inspection of the premises, and really, they didn't find anyone, and have no rational explanation for this event. Unnerved by the paranormal experience, in 2009, Andre appealed to TAPS Quebec, an organization that conducts paranormal investigations. A request was put forward to access the Notman House in order to carry out paranormal research, but unfortunately permission was denied. To this date, there have not been any paranormal investigations into these hauntings. Unsatisfied, Andre sat on the story until he contacted Haunted Montreal in March of 2016. With the strange experience still weighing heavily on his mind after almost 15 years, Andre lamented how since then, the area containing the offices and everything else was demolished and renovated. It's a pity. Who or what might be haunting the Notman House is a mystery, so it's always a good idea to explore the history of the building in order to speculate about the different possible scenarios. The home was originally commissioned by Sir William Collis Meredith, a 31-year-old lawyer and bachelor. In 1843, he hired renowned architect John Wells to design the home. Wells had previously designed the opulent Bank of Montreal building on the north side of the Place d'Armes, still standing and St. Anne's Market, which was torched by an angry mob in 1849 when it served as Canada's parliament. Called Meredith House in the beginning, the handsome limestone building was constructed in 1845. Featuring Greek Revival architecture, formal simplicity, refined elegance, and the highest quality of construction, these were the building's hallmarks. Sir William quite enjoyed his home, until in 1849 a judicial promotion beckoned him to live in Quebec City. He leased his home to several prominent Montrealers, including Thomas Evans Blackwell, president of the Grand Trunk Railway, before selling it to Alexander Molson, grandson of famous brewer John Molson. In 1876, the house was sold again, this time to William Notman, a celebrated Scottish photographer who had moved to Montreal in 1856. 
He moved in with his family, and the home was henceforth known as Notman House. William Notman ran a very successful photography business. The technology was very new for the era, and taking portraits of wealthy patrons could result in great profits. Notman was an incredibly studious artist. He was known to devote long hours to his enterprise, and in mid-November 1891, the overworked photographer contracted a cold, which he ignored. As he continued working, his condition worsened into pneumonia. Despite his doctor ordering complete bed rest, William Notman died in his home. At the time of his passing, his collection included over 450,000 photographs. Today, the images are housed in the Notman Photographic Archives at Montreal's McCord Museum and are considered invaluable because they provide glimpses into Montreal's Victorian past. Following Notman's death, the property was purchased in 1894 by Sir George A. Drummond. Curiously, he had just ordered a new house to be built for himself on Sherbrooke Street West in 1889 after his previous residence, located right next door, was reported to be haunted. Ever the philanthropist, Sir George A. Drummond promptly gifted the Notman House to the Sisters of the Anglican Order of St. Margaret. An architect named Andrew Taylor was hired to design another building to the north, which was baptized St. Margaret's Home for the Incurables, and put to use as a hospital for those with terminal diseases such as tuberculosis or need of palliative care. No doubt, with such a mandate, the hospital witnessed countless, often painful deaths. A passageway was built to connect the two buildings, and a healing garden was laid out behind the addition. Concerning the spirit Andre had encountered, if it came down the passageway from the hospital to the Notman House, one might speculate that it was the ghost of a nursing sister running for assistance to help a dying patient. It would also be wrong to discount the possibility that the spirit is William Notman himself having perished suddenly in his beloved home. The hospital was eventually converted into a home for elderly women, and after being run by the Anglican sisters for almost a hundred years, in 1991 St. Margaret's home merged with the Good Shepherd House for elderly men and relocated to Westmount. Both Notman House and St. Margaret's Home for the Incurables were abandoned for the first time in their collective history. The forlorn buildings began to take on a look of dilapidation, and the garden became overgrown and weed-choked. They saw very little human activity, apart from the occasional rental or film shoot. The property sat on the market, and speculators argued about what should be done with it. One proposal called for a Notman Photography Centre that would celebrate and display Quebec's best photography, including Notman's personal collection. This plan fell through due to economic instability at the time. Another idea was to demolish the healing garden and former hospital and build a deluxe hotel. But this plan was nixed in 2001 by the culture minister, who duly noted that the property had been declared a historic monument in 1979. During the time of Andre's experience, the Notman House had been abandoned for 11 years and had taken on an exceptionally creepy atmosphere. This was to continue for another decade, right up to 2011, when the buildings were finally reoccupied on a more permanent basis. In January 2011, the Osmo Foundation leased the Notman House and made it available to internet entrepreneurs, early stage venture capitalists, and the general public. According to the Osmo Foundation's website, it is a non-profit entity created by investors, technology and media executives, and the community itself. Its mission is to use its financial resources to facilitate the transfer of knowledge, experience and relationships from experienced entrepreneurs and their support ecosystems to aspiring entrepreneurs. During this time, a man rented a desk in a room from the Osmo Foundation in the Notman House. He soon learned that it was rumored to be haunted, and there appeared to be a spooky old morgue in the basement. There was also no security or alarms at that time, prompting numerous break-ins. According to the man, the garden was also forlorn, and he recalls having to pick syringes out of the courtyard and overgrown garden. On several occasions, he slumbered in the Notman House, but usually felt uneasy, explaining how Notman House lent itself to mystery. You always had an off sense that things were all around you. He never had a comfortable nap there, and always slept with one eye open. Eventually, he decided to give up his desk in the Notman House, and sought a less disturbing workspace. To improve the situation, in October of 2012, the Osmo Foundation set a goal of raising funds to transform the building into a dream home for technological entrepreneurs. Their vision for the Notman House was to provide users with affordable office space, a large venue for events, and a green roof featuring a cafe. 
The spokesperson for the Osmo Foundation, Gabriel Sundaram, told Cult Montreal at the time that they were getting a lot of positive feedback from people in the neighborhood who had walked by this space for years and years and just knew it as something that looked like this kind of haunted looking space. On December 19th, 2012, the Osmo Foundation formally acquired the property with the help of municipal, provincial, and federal government grants, as well as private sponsors. Renovations soon began to convert the old Notman House and St. Margaret's Home for the Incurables into the proposed dream home for tech startup entrepreneurs. Sundaram was especially pleased with the historic building because of its connection to photographer William Notman. Drawing a parallel through time, Sundaram enthused that Notman was the Steve Jobs of the time. He was at the center of Montreal when it was in its golden age. He was really pushing the technology of photography at the time and was also a real artist. Today, the Osmo Cafe sits between the two buildings and is a hive of activity. Baristas, tech geeks, and visitors all mingle in this bustling space between meetings and workshops. With so many people occupying the building after a long period of abandonment, one wonders if any of them have experienced anything haunted or paranormal. When contacted, the representatives of Notman House declined to answer any questions on the topic, including whether or not they would allow a team of paranormal investigators to access the site to carry out research into the mystery. Whether or not the tech entrepreneurs have experienced anything uncanny or paranormal is presently unknown. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who has experienced something strange at the Notman House? If so, we'd love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories about what could be going on. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first video, we do hope that you'll stick around for the next one. We post videos in French and English every Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by Donovan King, it's all in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling tours. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll have a new video out next Saturday, but until then, stay spooky.